Welcome. Let's take a look at understanding the motion of a particle via the net change theorem. So suppose we have a particle that moves along a straight line and its velocity is measured in meters per second and is defined by the function v of t equals t squared minus t minus 6 where t is greater than or equal to 0. So here on the right, we have a graph of the velocity function. And what we want to do is find the total displacement of the particle during the interval from 1 less than or equal to t less than or equal to 4. So the displacement of the particle from t equals 1 to t equals 4. So as we look at the graph of this velocity function, uh, we can see that on the interval from 1 to 3 that the velocity function is negative. And that means that the particle is moving to the left and the area between the graph of the velocity function and the x-axis represents the distance that the particle moves to the left in those three seconds. And then continuing on to uh, t equals 4, we can see that the velocity function now becomes positive on the interval from 3 to 4, and that means that the particle is now moving to the right, and the area between the velocity function and the x-axis will um, represent the distance that that particle moves to the right. Now notice it appears that the area on the interval from 1 to 3 below the x-axis is larger than the area on the interval from 3 to 4 and above the x-axis. So we might anticipate that because this area on uh, below the x-axis is greater, or at least appears greater, that the displacement of this particle will probably be in a negative direction or to the left of um, its initial point. So the total displacement of the particle on this interval would be the integral from 1 to 4 of the velocity function dt. That will give us the total displacement. So this is the integral from 1 to 4 of t squared minus t minus 6 dt. The antiderivative of t squared would be t cubed and then divided by 3 minus the antiderivative of t, that would be t squared, divided by 2, minus, and then this antiderivative of 6 would be 6t, and then we're evaluating that from t equals 1 to t equals 4. So we end up with 4 cubed over 3, minus 4 squared over 2, minus 6 times 4, minus, and now evaluating at 1, uh, 1 cubed over 3, minus 1 squared over 2, minus 6 times 1. And so we have 64 thirds minus, and then 16 divided by 2 is 8, so minus 8, minus 24, then minus, uh, and we'll go ahead and distribute this minus sign. So minus 1 third, and then plus a 1 half, and plus a 6. So simplifying a bit more, we have 64 thirds 
let's see, we have negative 8 and negative 24. That's negative 32. And then negative 32 plus 6 will be 26. So minus 26 minus 1 third plus 1 half. And at this point, we need to get a common denominator. And that common denominator will have to be 6. So we'll have to multiply our first term by 2 over 2, uh, the 26 by 6 over 6, the 1 third by 2 over 2, and the 1 half by 3 over 3. Now we have a common denominator of 6. 2 times 64 is 128, 8 minus 156, that's 26 times 6, minus 2, and then plus 3. And if I... Um, do the arithmetic there in that numerator, I get negative 27 over 6. That can be simplified. 3 goes into 27 9 times. 3 goes into 6 twice. So we get um, negative 9 halves or negative 4 and 1 half meters. So the displacement of the particle is to the left by negative 4 and 1 half meters. In our next part of the problem, we want to find the total distance that the particle traveled in the first 4 seconds. So again, here we have our velocity function and its graph. And now we're looking at the first 4 seconds. So starting at t equals 0, we can see that the particle traveled to the left some fair amount. And it's to the left because this area is below the x-axis. And then after t equals 3, from t equals 3 to 4, we can see that the particle does uh, travel some distance to the right. So if we want to find the distance, the total distance that a particle traveled, um, what we have to do is we have to integrate the absolute value of velocity. And why? Because this distance that's gone to the left, so the integral from 0 to, uh, that's 3, if I integrate that, because this area is under the curve, or under the x-axis, uh, that will be a negative value. And that negative simply tells me that that distance has been traveled to the left. Well, if I want the total distance, um, I don't necessarily care that the distance traveled was to the left. And if I were to combine this negative value with this value from uh, the integral from 3 to 4 of v of t dt, then um, I'm going to actually underestimate or undercalculate the distance. So that's why we need the absolute value. So we'll go from 0 to 4 v of t dt. And now I need to know, I need to decide where is v of t greater than 0 versus where is v of t less than 0. Now since we have the graph, that's kind of easy to find. But let's assume we didn't have the graph and, and think about how we might determine that. So if we were to need to figure out where that velocity is positive versus negative, we would want to first find out where our velocity function actually equals zero. 
And in this case, that's t squared minus t minus 6 equals 0. And that actually does factor nicely uh, in this particular case. This is equal to 0, and we get uh, one factor being t minus 3, and the other factor being t plus 2 equals 0. And so the zeros of that are t equals 3 and negative 2. Now, we're only interested when t is greater than 0. Negative 2 is not greater than 0, so we can go ahead and disregard that. And then we can simply test our velocity function, v of t, on the intervals created. So one interval is from 0 to 3, and the other interval would be from 3 to infinity. So uh, pick a nice easy value to work with in the interval from 0 to 3, like perhaps uh, 1 is nice and easy to work with. So v at 1 would be 1 squared minus 1 minus 6, so that's negative. So I know my velocity is negative in that interval. And then pick a nice value in 3 to infinity, um, say maybe uh, 10. And we would get 10 squared minus 10 plus 6. And we can see that this is 100, so the minus 10 and the plus 6 aren't going to impact that much. And so velocity is positive on that interval. So if we're interested in distance, on the interval from 0 to 3, uh, velocity is negative. So we're going to want to multiply our velocity function on that interval by a negative 1, or just take the opposite. So we're going to want the interval integral from 0 to 3, and we want the opposite of the velocity function by uh, multiplying by this negative 1, it will take that negative value and make it positive. So t squared minus t minus 6 dt, and then plus the integral from 3 to 4. We know that once we pass 3, our velocity function is positive, so it will give us a positive distance, so we don't have to modify our integrand at all. So we get t squared minus t minus 6 dt. So then this becomes uh, the integral from 0 to 3 of negative t squared plus t plus 6 dt plus the integral from 3 to 4 of t squared minus t minus 6 dt. So let's go ahead and evaluate these two integrals. The antiderivative of negative t squared is going to be negative t cubed over 3 Plus, and then we'll get, uh, for t, we'll get t squared over 2, plus, and then for 6, we'll get 6t. And we're going to evaluate that from 0 to 3, plus, uh, continuing on, uh, antiderivative t squared, we're going to get t cubed over 3, minus t squared over 2, minus 6t, and we'll evaluate that from 3 to 4. So now evaluating if we substitute in 3 for t, we get negative 27 thirds plus 9 halves plus 18 minus, and substituting in for 0, we get 0 thirds plus 0 halves plus 0. Going to add to that, now substituting in 4, 4 cubed is 64 thirds 
minus uh, 4 squared is 16 halves, minus 6 times 4 is 24, minus substituting in 3, we get uh, 3 cubed is 27 thirds, minus uh, 3 squared is 9 halves, minus 18. So noticing that we have denominators of 2 and 3, let's get a common denominator of 6, which means that we're going to be multiplying by 2 over 2 in, um, to negative 27 thirds, uh, 9 halves by 3 over 3, 18 by 6 over 6, 64 thirds by 2 over 2, 16 halves by 3 over 3, 24 by 6 over 6, 27 thirds by 2 over 2, 9 halves by 3 over 3, and 18 by 6 over 6. So let's go ahead and multiply those out, which creates this uh, fraction with 6 in the denominator. And negative 54 plus 27 plus 108 plus 128 minus 48 minus 144 minus 54 plus 27 plus 108. And if I add all of those terms together in our numerator, I end up with 98 over 6. Now, 2 divides 98 and we get uh, 49, and 2 divides 6, and we get 3. So this is equal to 49 thirds meters. So this particle traveled a total of 16 and 1 third meters. I hope you find this helpful.